Hello, in this video we are going to talk about tolerances. Tolerance refers to the variation that is unavoidable whenever you are manufacturing parts. No two manufactured parts are ever identical. The sum of degree of variation will exist. It's unavoidable. No Tolerances are used in production drawings to control the manufacturing process and control the variation between copies of the same part. An acceptable amount of variation must be determined. Acceptable variations allow the part to be off a little from the dimension on the blueprint, but still function within the assembly. A tolerance is an acceptable amount of dimensional variation that will still allow an object to function correctly. Here's the definition from ANSI or ASME regarding which dimensions need tolerances. As you can see, each dimension shall have a tolerance except for dimensions that are specifically identified as a reference, a max or minimum, or as a stock. What a stock part means is like a bolt or a nut that is manufactured in mass quantity that you're going to buy from a different manufacturer and use in your assembly. The tolerance may be applied directly to the dimension or it can be indicated by a general note located in the tile block of the drawing. Before we look at some examples, let's discuss how do you decide the amount of tolerance. Without tolerances, copies of individual parts could vary significantly, disallowing the use of a copy of the part because it does not fit or does not operate properly within an assembly. So how do you decide what's the correct amount to allow a variation? A large tolerance may affect functionality of the part. If you let it vary too much, then your part may no longer work correctly. However, you need to be careful by labeling small tolerances. Small tolerance generally cost, sorry, generally increases the cost of manufacturing the part and sometimes will make it too costly to um, sell the part. So do not specify a tolerance that is smaller than necessary. There are three basic tolerances that occur most often on working drawings limit dimensions, bilateral tolerance, and unilateral tolerance. Let's look at these individually so you can understand the differences. Here's an example of limit dimensions. I know that it's a limit dimension because it provides an upper limit and a lower limit for the dimension. Any size in between these two decimals is acceptable for the part and it will still function correctly. However, should my part measure 0.127, we would not be able to use it. Bilateral tolerance. Here's an example of a bilateral tolerance. It provides an equal allowable variation both larger and smaller than the specified dimension. You will know that it's a bilateral tolerance because you will see a plus minus combination symbol given next to the tolerance amount. This example shows that the counter bore depth can be 0 .003 larger or smaller than 0.25 and the whole depth or the whole location can be 0 0.05 larger or smaller than 1.5 as seen right here. Unilateral tolerance. Here is an example of unilateral tolerance. I can tell because it provides allowable variation in only one direction. Notice that 0.5 in this example can be bigger by 0 0.004 but it is not allowed to be any smaller. Unilateral tolerances will use a separate plus and minus sign. So let's practice what you have learned. Identify the type of tolerance displayed in red. So first, I would like for you to get in your mind which type of dimension this is. These are your choices. 
If you chose unilateral tolerance, you are correct. Because I have two se a separate plus and minus sign, and it has tolerance in only one direction. Now let's look at the middle red dimension. Please choose from these three choices which is the correct type of dimension for this example. If you chose bilateral tolerance, you are correct. How did I know? Because there is a plus minus combination indicating that my tolerance can be two ten thousandths larger or two ten thousandths smaller than 1.17. And finally, if you look at the bottom right of your screen, we have our last set of dimensions. Hopefully you figured out they are limit dimensions either by process of elimination or by noticing I'm giving an upper limit and a lower limit. The specified dimension is the target dimension, the exact dimension that we would like to have, but we realize that not everything is going to come out exactly 1.5. So how much variation are we willing to accept and our parts still function correctly? So that's given by this tolerance to the side. Limits are the maximum and minimum sizes shown by the tolerance dimension. The upper limit is the maximum allowed, so we take the specific dimension, add the positive variance, and my upper limit in this example is 1.55. The lower limit is the minimum dimension that is allowed, so we take the specified dimension and subtract the negative variance, and then that gets us 1.45, which is the smallest amount that we will be allowed to have. If a part is manufactured outside of the limits established by the tolerance, the part is said to be out of tolerance. So the tolerance is the total variation in a dimension and is equal to the difference between the upper and lower limits. So in our example, the upper limit was 1.55 and when I subtract the 1.45 for the lower limit, my tolerance, total tolerance, is one. Tenth. So let's learn to calculate tolerance when I'm given a bilateral dimension. So I have five hundredths for the upper limit and I have five hundredths for the lower limit. So overall my tolerance is one tenth. General tolerances are tolerances that are assumed if no specific tolerance is given. We don't have to write a tolerance for every single dimension on the sheet. In fact, when you have a lot of dimensions on the sheet, it can really clutter your blueprint. So typically, tolerances are specified based on the number of digits to the right of the decimal point. And then you include a legend at the bottom of your blueprint. So for example, using these general tolerances, a linear dimension specified with a precision of one digit to the right of the decimal point is specified to be manufactured within a variation of two hundredths larger or smaller than the specified dimension. Here's an example of general tolerances as indicated on a blueprint. Notice there is a key down here for any of the um, dimensions on the blueprint that do not have a specified tolerance. So I would use the plus or minus three thousandths in this uh, that is specified for this dimension. But look at this diameter of 0 .380. It does not have a specified tolerance, so I would use the key. It has three decimal places, so I would come down here and find three decimal places. My tolerance is plus or minus five thousandths. Therefore, the total to therefore the upper limit is 3. Point oh, 
I'm sorry, it doesn't have a minus sign. It's only positive, so our tolerance is 3.005. Oh, I'm sorry, the line is in the way. It does have plus or minus. So I can do 0 0.380 plus 0 0.005, which would be 0.385, would be my upper limit. And then if I did 0 0.380 minus 0 0.005, my lower limit would be 0.375. Notice in this example, we have, let's look at three. It has two decimal places. So we're going to use the key with two decimal places. Its allowable amount of tolerance is positive or negative one one hundredth. So my upper limit would be three plus one one hundredth, making it three point oh one. My lower limit is three minus one one hundredth, and so that would make my lower limit two point nine nine. Overall, my total tolerance is one up. Uh, two one hundredths because it is one one hundredth in one direction and one one hundredth in the other direction. A manufactured part is said to be out of tolerance if the part is not within the specified limits. Manufacturing facilities often institute quality control measures to help ensure that parts are within tolerance. Many companies hire people to be quality control specialists and measure parts as they come out to ensure that the parts fall within the tolerances. There are two different types of fit, actually three different types of fit, that parts can have. The first type is a clearance fit which limits the size so that there is always clearance when parts are mated. This means there will be a little bit of room to move when you try to put the two parts together. Interference fit limits the size of the part so that whenever you're mating you have a snug fit when they are put together. And often you have to force the pieces together when you have an interference fit. Transition transition fit occurs when the two mating parts can sometimes have clearance fit or sometimes have interference fit. So here's an example of a clearance fit between the axle and the opening. The maximum size of the axle is 10 and the minimum size of the hole is 10.15. If these parts are manufactured correctly, there will always be a clearance between these two parts when the axle is inserted through the hole. In this case, we have interference fit. The minimum size of the axle is 9.92, but the maximum size of the opening is 9.90. Therefore, if the parts are manufactured correctly, the axle will always be larger than the opening. And this type of fit may be called a press fit or force fit, such that the two parts must be pressed together in order to assemble them. Maximum material condition is the condition of a part when it contains the largest amount of material. So on an external feature, it would be the upper limit. But on an internal feature, the diameter of a hole, for example, it would be the lower limit because that would cause you to use the most material. Least material condition is the opposite. It would be the condition when a part contains the smallest amount of material. For example, the least material condition for an external feature, the length of something, is the lower limit of the dimension and the least material condition of an internal feature, for example, the diameter of a hole, is the upper limit of the diameter dimension because that would give us the smallest amount of material. Allowance is the minimum clearance or maximum interference between parts. For a clearance fit, the allowance is the tightest possible fit between mating parts. So the uh, maximum material condition from the internal feature minus the maximum material condition for the external feature. So we will take our maximum 
minus our um, maximum for our internal piece and maximum for our external piece. the smaller hole will result in more material. So that's why we use the 10.15, not the 10.25. That's a little bit confusing because it says maximum. But you have to really think about what's going to give you the most material. The maximum material for this external feature is the larger number because that's what's going to make us use more material to make the part. So for the minimum, for the allowance of the um, interference fit, we use the maximum of the internal feature minus the maximum of the external feature. In general, the more significant figures in the dimension, the tighter the tolerance. Overly precise dimensions and overly tight tolerances increase manufacturing costs, so we want to be careful in how we choose what tolerances we define for our parts. Specify dimensions only to the precision and tolerance necessary for the part to function properly. I know this has been a lot of information and my video is way too long. I hope that you have a better understanding of tolerances. We will now do a short activity to help you under better understand the differences between the three types of tolerances. Thank you for listening. Have a good day.